ワンピース行くぞマンキー・ディ・ルフィ、The Fifth Emperor、Luffy's True Power。Hi everyone! Flying Panda! Here comes a One Piece Fury from Draco. This time, I'm gonna cover a topic that around 90% of the One Piece community don't agree with. This video is not meant to offend any religion or way of life. It's just a theory video using different facts to try to make my point and draw conclusions after using those facts. Now, let's get on with the video. This is, of course, about Luffy's current true power, which I believe hasn't been shown yet in the series post time skip, and I got the facts to back it up. First of all, there have been four arcs we've seen Luffy fight since the time skip. Don't count s h a b o n i because Luffy just uses King's Haki on a fake straw h a t dodged the pacifist lasers like nothing, and one shot one. I don't count Luffy one shotting h e l m e p o as a fight, so why should I really count this? The other arc since the time skip was on z o e where Luffy didn't really fight at all. He traded a fist with a mink who thought he was an intruder. In any of these fights, Luffy didn't really show what he was truly capable of. There are three fights so far that we have seen a glimpse of what Luffy can do after the time skip. They are the fight versus Do Flamingo, Commander k r a k e n and of course the Great Katakuri. In neither of these fights, Luffy went all out or was in good fighting condition, but we'll come back to that later in this video. The first real fight we've seen Luffy in since the post time skip is against Holy Jones in Fishman Island. We early saw Holdy get wrecked by Zoro underwater with no effect at all. Zoro didn't even put on his bandana. Holy Jones had to take a crazy amount of energy steroids for his transformation, where he gains new powers that baffles the fishermen and scare the sea monsters. Even with this new power, it wasn't even close to enough against Luffy. Luffy just jumps in, kicking him in the stomach, making fly through the rocky walls of Fishman Island. When they fight again, it's clear that Holy Jones does not stand a chance against Luffy. Holy needs to battle Luffy underwater in his powered up state to be able to do anything against Luffy. Luffy gets some help from Fukubushi underwater because Holy would just have to pop Luffy's bubble to win. Even while being underwater, all his attacks outside the bubble get weakened and it's still enough to overpower Holy with the Red Hulk. When they later get onto the Noah, Luffy crushes Holy with an elephant gun and he starts elephant gatling him into oblivion. His next fight in the New World is against Caesar Clown, and from the start it's very clear that Caesar doesn't stand a chance against Luffy. The only reason Luffy doesn't beat the crap out of Caesar from the start is because Law told him to capture him. This makes Luffy end up without oxygen in the end and getting captured by Caesar. But before the next round, Zoro tells Luffy to take it seriously, they're in a new world now. And Luffy takes it a bit more serious, I suppose. Luffy later fights against Caesar Clown, taking care of him without a problem, staying away from his lack of oxygen area. He keeps hurting Caesar with his blows, and even when Caesar uses his gas to power up, all Luffy needs to finish the job is a grizzly magnum. In all, These fights, we don't see Luffy use a gear f o r t h because they are not needed in the slightest. Now, onwards to the major fights in the New World, starting with Luffy vs. e Do Flamingo. When Luffy fights Do Flamingo, he is far from in good condition. He had fought in the Colosseum and vs. e other Conqueror Haki users, Don Chin Zhao. He has to fight his way to Do Flamingo with some help, of course, as usual, after Pika changing the terrain and Kiros. Killing Do Flamingo's string clone. Luffy is also taking a lot of hockey punches from Bellamy before his fight with Do Flamingo. Again, Do Flamingo also had a fight against Law earlier in a 1 to 1 and earlier a 2 vs 1 with Fujitura against Law. He also took the Gamma Knife from Law, which he patched up like nothing, like a boss. In the start of the Luffy vs Do Flamingo, Luffy doesn't manage to do a lot in his base form against Do Flamingo, but when Luffy entered Gear 4, Do Flamingo doesn't stand a chance. He doesn't manage to land a single effective hit on Luffy during his gear for Boundman. Luffy just plummeted Do Flamingo around like he's nothing, and Do Flamingo doesn't manage to stop Luffy in gear for in any way. 
Luffy said himself he only needs one more punch to take out Doflamingo before his gear 4 runs out. If he wasn't depleted on Haki before the fight against Doflamingo, he could have finished Doflamingo right there. But we all know what happens next, Doflamingo isn't down yet and Gats have to buy Luffy time, 10 minutes, to get ready to fight. Also, this gave Old an opportunity to show off Sabo more versus Jesus Burgess. Luffy tells Gats that he only needs one punch to finish Doflamingo. When the fight starts against Luffy, defends Rebecca and gets a barrage of Haki and four strings at his stomach. Doflamingo uses his string to try and control Luffy and Luffy breaks free with gear 4. He dodges Doflamingo's attack and jumps up in the air using his King Kong gun and takes out Doflamingo with one punch. For more details of that fight, Feel free to watch this link of One World HD's video on the topic he covers it really well. Damn I missed my bro. I just might have a thing or two to add. Then in the next major fight you have Luffy vs 3rd Commander Cracker. Cracker is far from weakling and has very strong Anamahaki. Luffy doesn't manage to break his biscuit soldiers with his normal attacks but once Luffy goes into gear 4 Boundman, he destroys Cracker biscuit soldiers without problem. But Cracker makes a horde of biscuit soldiers and Luffy doesn't manage to land a hit on Cracker. But all here can probably agree that Luffy could have defeated Cracker with a King Kong gun, but there were two major reasons why he didn't use it against Cracker. One, Nami was there and she isn't physically durable and Luffy wouldn't risk Nami getting hurt or killed in the process of him using King Kong gun on Cracker. Luffy doesn't know how many more strong enemies he would have to face before he got to Sanji so he had to hold back a bit to not use up all his haki and stamina. Third reason, it was a way for Oda to introduce Tankman full version to us all and show us that Luffy has more forms of Gear 4, like I mentioned 2 years ago. When Luffy uses Gear 4 Tankman, he takes Cracker's attack head on and defeats him without his own power, sending him flying through his biscuit soldiers. For Cracker, who cannot handle pain, he gets one-shotted by Luffy in Tankman full version. Now, for the last fight versus Katakuri, most people probably can agree that Luffy wasn't at 100% versus Katakuri. And he had fought Cracker, Sanji, the enraged army, broken out of jail, finding his way to the meeting place and fought the members of the Charlotte family at the wedding before he got to fight Katakuri. The only thing that Katakuri had against him that might not have made him 100% was that he hadn't had his merienda snack time yet and that he fought at the wedding just like Luffy did. Luffy battles Katakuri and Katakuri shows Luffy his power that if Luffy can throw a punch, he can do a better one. And the fight is very one side until Luffy enters Gear 4 Bowman then he starts getting some real hits on Katakuri. But Katakuri isn't down yet and shows Luffy that he can compete with Gear 4 Bowman. Not even Gear 4 Bowman is enough to take down Katakuri, but he is at least able to put up a good fight versus Katakuri, but once he regains his cool, he shows Luffy that Gear 4 Bowman isn't enough to take him down. Thankfully for Luffy, Katakuri tells him that his Gear 4 Bowman is about to come to an end. Luffy manages to escape through the mirrors with Brulee, but instead of him leaving there and just escaping with his crew, he decides to go back and fight him because he doesn't want to run anymore and because he wants to overcome Katakuri and advance his observational haki just like him. The fight between Katakuri and Luffy continues. Luffy is mostly dodging attacks and trying to unlock advanced observational haki. Flambe hits Luffy with one of her poison dart arrows that allows Katakuri to hit him with his spear thrust. This was not how Katakuri wants to win the fight, he wanted Luffy to fight him on equal terms when they both gave it their all, so infuriated with Flambe, he stabs himself to put the fight back at equal terms. Katakuri gets frustrated over Luffy for not going all out against him because Katakuri knows Luffy has a lot more to give. Then Luffy reveals that he got the means to take out Katakuri and this was the perfect opportunity for him to see if Gear 4 for Snake Man is enough to win against a future Glimpse Sight Haki user. We also know since his flashback with Rayleigh that Luffy had developed Snake Man for the very reason and this was his chance to put it to the test. 
Luffy is able to hit Katakuri with his Snake Man even though Katakuri can see into the future. They have an epic clash but in the end Luffy's Snake Man is enough to take down Katakuri and wins the fight. I want to point out that I don't think Luffy went all out in this fight and I don't think that Katakuri did either, but the end result would have been the same if they did. I will start covering the facts now and why I believe that to be the case. This is of course about Luffy's current true power which I believe hasn't been shown yet in the series post time skip and I got the facts to back it up. The reason I covered Luffy's previous fights in this video was for you viewers to have a reminder of what went down and so it would be easier to relate to what I'm going to show you now. The most important fact we have is the flashbacks with Rayleigh and when Luffy is on the island Rusuk Kanai and training. Rayleigh stated that there were over 500 animal monsters and Rusuk Kana that Luffy couldn't defeat in his current condition two years ago. But after the time skip, Luffy has conquered the entire island of Rusuk Kana. When he fought the Flamingo and he ridiculed Gear 4 Bowman, Luffy responded with, I had to fight every day within these two years. With those animals that were the size of monsters, I had to use this giant size and spring to be able to defeat them. And as we later see Luffy completely crushes the Flamingo in Gear 4, he doesn't stand a chance. But now back to the most important thing, the Rayleigh flashback in Chapter 790. By the way, this was the Kong Gun. We can see that Rayleigh is still on the island so Luffy at least at the very least trained more than 6 months without Rayleigh after the scene. I would say it's around the 1 year mark, that's my guess not a fact. But what is a fact is that the Kong Gun took out the Flamingo and as we can see in the manga Luffy still had more time at the island. That means that the Warlord the Flamingo isn't even stronger than the strongest animals, monsters on Rusukana. Let us sink in for a while, the Flamingo isn't stronger than the strongest animals or monsters on that island. Because Luffy conquered that island, we can draw the conclusion that he is a lot stronger than the Flamingo and that Luffy got way more trump cards up his sleeve which he has yet to show us. We can just look to his next fight with Cracker where he shows us his Tank Man full version. This was his full version from that conclusion that he have a non-full version of Tank Man, a regular version of Tank Man that Luffy hasn't even revealed yet. Now to the flashback against Katakuri, when Rayleigh is telling Luffy about people that can see the glimpse of a future, here we can see that yet again Rayleigh is still on the island and preparing Luffy for the opponents like Katakuri. Luffy and Rayleigh probably started to work on a way to fight future side Kaki use against like, after this flashback. Even if that wasn't the case, Luffy still had time to train with Rayleigh on the island and in worst case scenario he had 6 months without Rayleigh. To say that Luffy has shown us all he got without seeing a normal version of Tank Man or even a flashback when Luffy is alone on the island is absurd. Then we have the comparison between Luffy and Zoro and the previous arcs. So far I don't think any reasonable person would say that Zoro have gone all out since the time skip. Zoro had made all the opponents look like fodder so far since the time skip. The moment Zoro put on his abandon against Pika, the fight was over. Pika didn't stand a chance. So to say that Luffy had been going all out when Zoro had just crushed his enemies like they were nothing doesn't make sense to me. If that was the case, we could have made Zoro the captain already. Or find a new one. One Piece fans probably won't say that we saw Luffy or Zoro go all out up against Tio Alabasta. To say that Zoro went all out now would be like saying he went all out versus Kabaji or Hachan Hachi. It would be the same as saying Luffy went all out against Buggy or Arlong. Arlong I could understand. We all know that Zoro's first true challenge was against Daz Bones Mr. One and Luffy was versus Crocodile. To say that Luffy went all out and showed his true power against the Flamingo, Cracker or Katakuri would be like saying Luffy did the same versus Buggy, Kuro, Don Krieg, Arlo, Mr. Free or Wapo. I think most One Piece fans can agree that he didn't show the true power until the battle against Crocodile. Also, Luffy didn't train to be strong enough to beat a Yonko commander. Luffy trained to be able to defeat a Yonko because he needs to surplus that wall to become the Pirate King. And if anyone knows what it takes to be the Pirate King, the person who would, would be the former Vice Captain of Pirate King crew, Rayleigh. He trained with Rayleigh for 18 months 
1.5 years and for six months on his own. Even Rayleigh doesn't know how strong Luffy has become. In chapter 598, personally, I believe the One Piece community is suffering from awesome antagonist bias. Not that weird considering the awesome antagonists like the Flamingo, Tatakuri, and Kaido. But don't let Luffy's enemies blind you. He and his crew have trained for this in the past two years. Currently, the One Piece fans are doing the same mistake every person who has faced Luffy and his crew has done in the series. They are underestimating Luffy and the Straw Hats. You should listen to Law and take his advice. The conclusion of this video 1. Because Luffy conquered the, the island with Rusukana, we can draw the conclusion that he is a lot stronger than Del Flamingo and that Luffy got way more trump cards up his sleeve, which he has yet to show us. 2. His flashback with Rayleigh proves that Luffy has more to show to us. He hasn't revealed all aces in his sleeve yet, because we haven't seen a single flashback when Luffy trains or fights in Rusakana after Rayleigh left the island. 3. Luffy trained with Rayleigh, the former vice captain of the Roger Pirates, and he should know what it takes to become the Pirate King. He showed Luffy, he doesn't know how strong Luffy has become since the time skip, neither do we. The One Piece fans. Just look at Gear 4 Tank Man. 4. Luffy's most likely have a Gear 5 that he's saving for a Yonko. And that everyone will be continued in part 2 of this video. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Thanks to my bro Draco. Please your comments down below. Please click like and if you haven't, please subscribe to Flying. Panda. What you fly by as a pendulum swings. What you count down to the end of the day. The clock ticks like a wave. It's so unreal. <laughs> Look out below. What time is it?